I'm Joey from Slipknot. I'm number one, and I play the drums. I'm Corey, singer for Slipknot. I'm number eight. Sid, number zero, I'm the DJ. I'm the clown, number six, I play percussion. Mick, number seven, guitar. Paul, number two, and I play bass. 133, number five, samples and keyboards. James, number four, I play guitar. Chris, number three, I play percussion. Don't be afraid to pull on your stick, man. How did growing up in Iowa influence your music? Um, as far as our music goes, I couldn't speak for anyone else that lives there, but as far as just all nine of us go, um, I guess what you see right now, and like if you've heard any of the music or the music that you'll see also on your website here, is um, a product of pretty much a barren wasteland of, you know, of entertainment that goes on uh, in Des Moines. And it's not necessarily entertainment either, it's a barren wasteland just for outlets. And uh, when we were all in different bands prior to joining together, we, um, you know, we did a, lo a lot of work you know, with our other bands and trying to promote and encourage heavy music in that scene. And, and, and not only trying to promote uh, necessarily our music at the time, the attitude started getting more angry and aggressive towards feelings of us being rejected and being torn down for what we were trying to do. Therefore, when we formed, we all like, got sick of basically the element that was, that was Des Moines, Iowa. And we all came together and formed a supergroup, which is kind of what we like to call it. And uh, we've created Slipknot, you know, and um, since we were getting treated like faceless, you know, like we were pretty much totally anonymous there, we decided to be anonymous. So we put on the mask because we're not about our names or our faces. We're about our music 100%. Cool. How did you guys first become interested in music? Well, a lot of us, especially uh, the guys in the band, the people we hang out with, you know, like Joey said, we came from a place that had nothing. So you basically developed your own sense of self. You, de you developed your own sense of individuality, you know. And that really brings out the sickness in a lot of people, especially the people from Des Moines, Iowa. And that <coughs> got us interested in the type of music that we're doing, you know. And it started out small and it just got you know sicker and sicker um you you have to have a gift to be in this band i believe that totally and truthfully and everybody in this band had a gift that they have nurtured they have grown from the beginning and if it wasn't for the place that we came from we probably wouldn't have it and the music we grew up listening to just fed it even more what kind of music did you guys grow up listening to um, for all of us, we kind of, basically I can speak for everyone in the band when, you know, like early Slayer and old Black Sabbath, which we have the fortunate well-being of being on tour with right now, you know, and it's ve we're very excited about that because they're big influences. Uh, Beatles, we, so a lot of us are Beatles fans, of course, Led Zeppelin. Um, and then we got into like old school thrash, you know, with, along with, you know, Slayer and um, like old Anthrax and stuff like that and it, it just flourished in a meaner and like we got into the death metal style a lot like old bands like um, Autopsy and Repulsion and now it's carried into new bands like in Nazem and stuff like that that we listen to quite often and basically we don't derive from any certain type of music but with nine guys you know we got a DJ that influences a lot of our stuff now too and he doesn't do like the old, still, old school like hip hop style scratching and stuff even though he's really good at it he invents like a lot of new um, like noises and stuff that really help enhance uh, a new element into our music. And we have three percussions too, because we're in the big drums. And uh, we have like not long, even though I play the main drum kit, we have two guys up at the front of the stage that play big cannon drums. They also have like mounted kegs, keg drums, and like actual beer kegs that are empty. And uh, it, it creates it quite, it creates quite a unique sound actually. How did you guys arrive? at a nine-piece metal band using everything from a power saw to samples? Just happened, you know. I mean, when you're, when you're trying to get your point across, you use whatever, you know, whatever's there. And uh, the band started out, it was originally a six-piece. And um, it, uh, it grew to the point where we were at eight, and we were going really good with that, but there was still something missing. We knew there was something missing. And that's when we added our DJ. 
and it just it just fit, you know. When you're making the kind of noise that we are, you got to you you can't you can't cheese it. You can't second guess it. You got to go all the way. And you have to be as intense as possible. You have to be as expressive as possible. And the fact that we have nine people, it's there's no gimmick to this. Everybody plays their own instruments. There's no it's like it's not like we have this side show going on. This is a full functioning band and to to do what we want to do, it's exactly what it took. So it just it all worked out in the end. What made you guys decide to sort of push the envelope of heavy metal the way you do, with the size of your band and the type of instruments you play and the look of the band? The people we are, we can't help but be the best. You know what I'm saying? We will never be second best because in our hearts, we can't let ourselves be that. We are nine overachievers. We are nine guys that will go the extra distance to see what we do. Like Joey was saying, every day, every minute of the day, we're constantly working on the band. You know, we take care of ourselves so we can be the best band. We act. We we just we're living our dream. You know, I mean, as as much power as you put into this band, you can't help but come out like ten thousand volts of electricity. I mean, it's 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 hard to explain. Another thing is like, with, I guess, musically speaking, I mean, I know all of us, uh, or me, and uh, as well as all the rest of us. I mean, we have our favorite bands and stuff that I guess has played influence early on. But the fact is, we wouldn't have got to this point if we didn't create something fresh, new, and innovative. You know, and the only reason to do that is kind of from the confines of where we were and like the exposure that we were receiving, which was zero to make us do this I and mean, we're like and, and it just clicks in you I mean you, you there's like just like a serial killer or, or like a, a person that is this like you know you hear about those, uh, those postal workers and shit they had enough you know and it's like they just snap and it's like finally it's like this is what we got to do I mean because I mean everyone kind of has like the preconce preconceived things like in their brain of like you know what it would be like to do this someday but it's usually like a dream and you don't really act on it well we acted on it and and we we worked so hard to do it and to push the envelope I mean is the only way for this band to work because I mean when you see a band like this the, the biggest letdown would be the music sucking and it were exactly the opposite I mean we're about the music 100 percent and this is completely secondary you know this comes not from an image standpoint of trying to get the band noticed but from a band that is so about its music that that should be the real you know the real the real package and not about a rock star image I think our audience is everybody man I mean we have like Joey said, we're an eclectic sound, and because of that, I think we draw a lot of a lot of people from a lot of different scenes. Uh, the darkness will draw a lot of the kids who are into the dark stuff. Um, uh, Mick and Jim's playing the, uh, will obviously draw like the guitar-oriented crowd. You know, the guys are really into technicality and stuff like that. Uh, just the sheer heaviness will bring the hordes that are into the heavy music anyway. You know, and we we're we're so fringe that we're mainstream. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take everybody, and we're not afraid to say that we're gonna be the biggest band in the world. And anybody who's not in line is just getting left in the dust. How does how does a uh, an audience affect your live performance? It really builds us, man. Because I mean, we're sick to begin with, but you put a live audience in front of us, and we're gonna push every button. We're gonna push every extreme to get a rise out of you and if you don't we're just gonna go even harder um, we wrote the music for us but in a lot of ways the audience helps us maintain the feeling when we wrote that music in the first place you know what I'm saying it's like we didn't we weren't catering to one audience we were catering to us but the fact that so many people are like kindred lovers of this music that it's just it's incredible that pushes us to extremes that you wouldn't even believe uh, a lot of times we'll come off stage bloody. Uh, a lot of times we'll come off stage and we can't catch our breath. We might pass out, might pass out on stage. But the audience keeps us going, and it, as long as you know, as long as there's people to play in front of, we'll keep doing it. We just made MTV News recently because uh, Sean, there with the, the clown, um, had been rushed to the hospital because he was uh, on top of one of the percussive drum sets up in front and was coming down like on a, on like a, a beat and a slam and like cracked his, um, I think it's left eyelid. 
<laughs> open, and he had to be rushed to the hospital. But the thing, the funny thing is, is that he did it on a, ironically on a song called Eyeless. <laughs> and he, and it was the second song in the set, so he had to finish the whole set with blood, like covering a whole eye. So he had to play with one eye, and then he even signed autographs for a while, like after the show was done. And ironically, even before that, is right before we left, our DJ Sid had to go to the hospital for putting a gash, um, like three inches out the top of his head, required like 15 stitches. Um, so it's like, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Do you guys think bands like the Rolling Stones and Aerosmith are too old to tour? <laughs> like, hell, ever... hell no. No, because, I mean, why, why should they be? I mean, yeah, there's sometimes where people will say, you know, look at them, they're too old. And, you know, but the fact is, I mean, come on, they've already done everything that could possibly have been done. There's honestly, I mean, they can, yeah, they'll go out and make a lot more money, but the fact is they've already had a lot more money because a lot of them have been off the drug problems forever and they've still been doing tours. The fact is if you don't love music, you wouldn't be doing it. And who are, is anyone to tell them that they can't do it? Because, I mean, shit, they started a lot of the stuff, you know, Aerosmith and all those bands like Kiss and stuff. Not our only, you know, really big influences on all of this, but the fact is they created awesome music and why can't they keep, like, producing that music to the mass audiences that will still pay for it? Like I said, as long as there's an audience, man, why not go out? If your audience dwindles, then obviously you're not making the statement you were making in the past. But as long as people want to see you play, man, go for it. You know? I mean, I hope you never know. I mean, I hope that someday I can be in a position to do that myself. But if it ever gets to the point where I'm doing it just for monetary reasons, screw it, I'll let it go. Yeah, because, I mean, your fans will see through that. Because if you're honestly doing it for, you know, money reasons, you will not be putting the same heart into your shows and into your production or any of that stuff that you would be doing if you're doing it for the love of music alone because mm. people can literally see through that. It's just like why certain bands have a lot better live shows and can captivate the audience a lot better than other bands because it's the feeling that they're holding inside and they know how to channel towards that audience and pull it back in and make it one unified scene. So like it's a question of sincerity. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good people point. aren't stupid most of the time, you know. The majority of people aren't stupid. They'll see and they can feel, especially they can feel if you're being truthful. And you fuck them once, they're not going to come back again, you know what I'm saying? So You got to really watch your ass and that shit. Yeah. So they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't be able to still do it if it wasn't sincere, I don't think, you know. Okay. Yeah, of course, I mean, if there's going to be money, they're going to want to make it. You can't say that ain't right. But, I mean, you can tell. You can tell they, would they, they wouldn't do it. I mean, these guys are they are getting up there in age, and it kicks ass that they're still doing it, you know?